One goddamn religion. Submission. Islamic genocide. 1. Punitive platitudes. I will cite something of his story. Quran 18.083. Considering the depravity of Muhammad's oratory as it was retained in the hadith and the deplorable nature of his Quran recitals, 100 of which have been cited, 67 in their entirety thus far, it is a miracle that Islam survived the desert crossing from the religious ruins of Petra to the farming oasis of Yathrib. Looking back, as we are doing, at the emergence of this miserable religion, the commencement of such antiquated sunnah, and the recitation of holy incredulous scriptures, we are left with very few potential explanations as to how something this destructive and deadly survived to torment our world. How did an avowed pedophile and rapist, a schizophrenic narcissist and psychopath, an unremorseful mass murderer, a vicious terrorist and illiterate dimwit with a deplorable attitude become the prophet of what is deemed by many to be a great religion? And since he is in the running for the worst person who ever lived, why does the world stand down when over 90% of today's terrorist atrocities are motivated by his horrifying legacy? Moreover, Muhammad wasn't even the most deplorable character in this story. His wannabe god was far worse. Allah, if we can call him that, was so demented and demonic, so diabolical and delusional, he gives the devil a bad name. He is insufferably self-aggrandizing while constantly too degrading his victims, comprised of tortured and teased, dead and enslaved humans. This snake is so unethical and unhinged, so incompatible with life and liberty, he must be eviscerated, or his appalling rhetoric will continue to plague mankind. His book, if we may distinguish a senseless confab of reprehensible recitals with this title, is exceedingly corrosive and immoral, indeed, stunningly stupid. And when its toxicity is ingested, it renders women little more than wombs for tomorrow's terrorists while turning boys into depraved monsters willing to rape, plunder, terrorize, and murder, not all of them, just the best of them. What little, at least apart from this cesspool of rotten religious rhetoric, might otherwise have merit was plagiarized from the Torah, pilfered from the only actual God, Yahuwah, to make the imposter, Allah, seem like a plausible substitute among the intellectually challenged. The rest is venomous vomit, replete with toxins that turn men into monsters. It is unadulterated evil. Recognizing that Muslims will be unable to refute the mountain of evidence brought against Muhammad, Allah, and the Quran presented throughout goddamn religion, their principal retort will be ad hominem attacks, slandering me for having the audacity to announce that Allah is Satan. But there is no other rational explanation for the annoying arrogance, horrifying depravity, overall incompetence, and sadistic temperament found within this wholly delusional and demented rant. Satan is the only spirit who would claim to be God by consistently misappropriating and misconstruing the testimony of God. There is none other who is this depraved and duplicitous, this braggadocious and dishonest. And as similar as this ungod and non-prophet may appear, Allah was too demeaning and dismissive of Muhammad in the initial surahs for one to be an expression of the other. Nonetheless, the wannabe God is ever ready to condone the most reprehensible behavior, turning much of three. The Quran into situational scriptures designed to satiate Muhammad's perverse cravings. Ha Satan the adversary plays a starring role in the Quran. Apart from Rabbi, Rahman, Allahi, Allaha, and Allahu, his name and title are the most prevalent. And during the episodes where he is the featured character, Satan and the wannabe God have a shared agenda. Affirming Allah's true identity as the purveyor of painful punishments, he spends all of his time roasting disbelievers in hell. And since Allah cops a plea, and admits as much, why mince words? And speaking of them, it all began with these ill-chosen words from the pathetic pen. Quran 96.001-5, Read in the name of your Lord who created, has created man from a coagulated blood clot. Read. And your Lord is most bountiful. Who taught by the pen? Taught man what he did not know. None of it was true. There was nothing to read. The Lord didn't have a name. Man was not created from a clot of blood. This Lord was the antithesis of bountiful, prioritizing instead self-adulation, fear, enslavement, humiliation, terror, and torture. There was no pen, no book, nothing written. And we have not learned anything we didn't know. When we considered the hadith explanations for this delirium, Islam's ridiculous recital grew more bizarre and inexplicable. Abu al-Qasim, meaning quarrelsome and demonic slave, was a recluse, hanging around in caves searching for self-justification. He was illiterate. The spirit was physically abusive toward him, nearly killing him. He was terrified, realized that he had been demon-possessed, and tried repeatedly to commit suicide. Stoned out of his mind, he imagined rocks and trees speaking to him. To console him, his wealthy wife, who was his cousin and employer, invented the profitable profit plan, becoming the actual instigator of Islam. For for the next two years, there was nothing, not even a short, weird, three-line recitation like those tacked onto the end of the Quran. So, he was a self-proclaimed messenger without a message, the rabbi's mute razuli. As such, Abu al-Qasim was mocked by friends and family. But it only got worse when the recitals recommenced. Although darker and twisted, now overtly demonic and degrading, they otherwise mimicked Hanif poetry from Sabaean converts to Judaism which had become popular throughout Arabia. Therefore, when the rabbi exalted one was given a name, he was Rahman, the god of the Hanif poets. A war of words commenced, during which time no one believed the man now known as Muhammad. His claims, and those echoed throughout his recitals, were foolish. His neighbors and extended family in the incestuous community of Bini Hashim called him an insane, demon-possessed fraud, a sorcerer and plagiarizer. In response, the ungod of the Quran said that one day the sky would fall, the mountains would run away and crumble, the stars would all grow dark, the sun would consume the moon, and then flesh and bones would be resurrected and reanimated so hell's warden could roast and scald those who rejected his razuli. Irritated by this, the Quraysh came up with a plan to test the prophetic credentials of the self-professed prophet without a prophecy, the traveler's tale. 
And while it stumped Muhammad, his Quranic lord took the bait and bragged that he was well acquainted with Dhul Karnan Alexander the Great because he had been a Muslim. History had it all wrong because the Macedonian general wasn't a pagan warrior in pursuit of Darius in Persia but, instead, an astronaut who discovered extraterrestrials living around the muddy spring where the sun goes nighty night. Next, his travels long ago took him to the realm of the sunrise where he thwarted Gog from attacking those who were living in fear of these mythical creatures. 5. Having embarrassed himself and his messenger beyond the pale, the never-ending argument was regurgitated many hundreds of times, with constant puffery over proofs, even a day of doom that never materialized. But, one day, the non-prophet lost it, and he threatened to slaughter his kin. If his ungod couldn't deliver on the painful punishments, he would bring his own. In response, the Quraysh sought to appease the antagonizing reciter, and they proposed the idol indulgence. The pagan custodians of the Qaybiyyah, the rock pile honoring rock gods, offered Abu al qasim sex, power, and money in exchange for including their favorite goddesses, Aulat, Manet, and al -Azza, in an amalgamated religion with his Rahman for a year, resolving the conflict and postponing the slaughter. Muhammad accepted. Then he reneged. But in between, the three goddesses were included in the Quran, where they remained enshrined in pagan lore. Adding insult to injury, two incredulous Quranic recitals followed, the first sanctioning the dissolution of vows, effectively stating that nothing the ungod or non-prophet revealed could be trusted. This declaration on wasted words and the license to lie was followed by the satanic statements, whereby the spirit behind the Quran came out of the closet and acknowledged that all of his messengers spoke for Satan because, well, Allah was the devil in drag. This was, of course, incriminating, so the messenger needed to escape the increased ridicule. With all of this working against Muhammad and Allah, surprisingly, it was the fabled flight that broke the camel's back and almost killed Islam as a religion. Muhammad imagined that a winged donk mule flew into town along with Allah and Gabriel to escort him to the non-existent temple in the undisclosed city of Jerusalem, where he served as an imam to lead deceased Hebrew patriarchs in prostration prayers. Passing through hell en route to his heaven, Muhammad made a complete ass of himself while six providing the fabled myth upon which Muslim insanity toward Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, and Al-Aqsa Mosque is predicated. It played poorly in Petra, where all but a few weak people abandoned Islam. The embarrassing exodus followed, showing the non-prophet slithering out of town under the cover of darkness while sprinkling fairy dust at those who were overcome with laughter. On his way out of Kabaville, however, something horrible occurred, something that would change the world. Still enraged over having been rejected by everyone, consumed by the desire to slaughter his people, Muhammad and a score of Arab pagans declared war on all mankind with justifiable jihad. Muslims would be militants offering a new referendum, damned if you do, dead if you don't. Either capitulate and worship Satan as if he were God, becoming the devil's slave, humiliating oneself through prostrations, relinquishing free will, disregarding human rights, denying progress, consenting to be taxed, and then be conditioned to fight and kill, or become their next victim. This would lead to genocidal rage against Jews, the compulsion of Arabs into submission, and the bloody conquest of the world from India to Spain, but that's getting ahead of our story. For now, Muhammad and his malcontent Muslims were making a menace of themselves in Yathrib. So as the fledgling flock of black sheep were plotting their plots and planning their plans, Ashura the consultation was recited to set the mood. Quran 42.0012 Ha Mem Ein Sin Kaf, these letters are a miracle of the Quran and only Allah knows the meaning. The only miracle is that billions believe this trash is divine. It's an imbecilic amalgamation of self-indulgence. The impotent and illiterate spirit would have his slaves believe that this holy deficient oratory is sublime because five Hebrew letters have been randomly strewn together. Seven and it is a miracle of the Quran because they believe it is a sign of their God's superior intellect as opposed to literary deficiency. However, should you be curious, ham em as ham or ham are words in Hebrew. Ham means hot and sunburned, which could have the snake complaining about the Arabian weather. And ham speaks of verbosity, babble with an abundance of clamor, which is also fitting considering what lies before us. As for ayin sin kof, as a sack it means, to be contentious and quarrelsome, which accurately depicts the text of the Quran. And a shak describes Allah's preference, which is, to violently oppress, to deceitfully defraud, and to wrongfully extort. Quran 42.003-6 thus reveals to you and to those from before you Allahu the to him, the mighty, the wise. Lahu to him whatever in the heavens and whatever in the earth and he the most high, the most great. Nearly the heavens break up from above them, by his majesty, and the angels glorify praises of their Lord, and ask for forgiveness for those on the earth. Lo! Verily, Allah the oft forgiving, the most merciful. And those who take from besides Allah who wali protectors, a guard, is, over them. And you are not a warden over them. Clearly, even relocated and rejuvenated with the move to the thriving oasis of Yathrib, the snake hasn't gotten any better with practice or a fresh outlook. It is the same regurgitated rhetoric. This was a waste of breath the first time it was uttered, and now it has become irritating. The Quran's message was not revealed to anyone prior to Muhammad. If it had actually confirmed the Torah then these recitals would not have been necessary, but since it is the antithesis of Yahuwah's testimony, the Quran is condemnable. Eight inches his inept audition as a wannabe god, Allahu is not mighty. With the worst book ever recited, Allahu cannot be wise. Satan is neither lofty nor good, much less great. Nonetheless, this overindulgent serpent is so impressed with his magnificence that he is claiming that the sky was about to give way and crumble under the enormity of his unbridled splendor. Unaware that spirits, even dark and demented ones, have no mass, this snake would have his slaves believe that the universe was busting at the seams around him. However, the Malakai spiritual messengers who retain their proper programming work tirelessly against this adversary, while the devil, who was once one of them, protests otherwise. He wants his ilk to glorify and praise him since he is busy doing so. 
These angels are even presented as intermediaries, pleading for forgiveness, even though intercessors are strictly forbidden in Islam. But that's not an issue because truth isn't a concern in a duplicitous religion where the most relentless of painful punishers has declared himself forgiving and merciful. Proving this point, Satan claims that no one can wholly protect themselves from his bite. And while the devil's advocate isn't afforded the coveted title of Hell's Warden, the angels are assigned as guards to prevent Allah who's prey from escaping. Such is the message of the Quran. Quran 42.007 Thus we have revealed to you a Quranan that you may warn mother of the towns and whoever around it. And warn day of assembly. No doubt in it. A party in Al-Janadi paradise and a party in the fire. Quran 42.008 If Allah who wanted, he could have made them one Ummatan community, but he admits whom he wants in his mercy. And al Zalamuna the cruel tyrants, subjugators and oppressors, not for them any wali protector and not any Nazarin helper. 9 Quran 42.009 Or have they taken from besides him wali protectors? But Allah who, he, the wali protector. And he gives life to the dead. And he on everything all powerful. Quran 42.010 And whatever you differ in it of a thing, then it's ruling to Allah he. That Allah who, Rabbi my Lord, upon him I put my trust and to him I turn. We, is schizophrenic, a disorder which is prevalent among psychopaths, having inexplicitly transitioned from third-person singular to third-person plural one sentence to the next. He's incredulous, too, recognizing that the five initial letters were all Hebrew, as is, Quran. The, mother of the towns, is not named because neither Petra nor Mecca had either long histories or spawned other towns. By comparison, Babel Babylon would have been a good candidate, as it preceded even Yerushalayim Jerusalem, and its influence was far-reaching. But Petra would not shine under the Nabataeans until 100 BCE, and even then, it was resolutely pagan. And Mecca wouldn't rise from the scorching sands until 700 CE when the Qaybiya was relocated. Allah whose day of assembly will never transpire. Satan has been threatening disbelievers with it for 14 centuries to no avail. The disintegrated bones, ligaments, and flesh, the brains, hearts, lungs, veins, nerves, eyes, and ears of deceased human corpses will never be reassembled and reanimated, replete with souls. It was all bluster. However, to thwart Yahuwah's return, Satan must either bamboozle or exterminate all humankind, beginning with Jews. And since he is inept, to advance his scheme, he must convince Muslims to become sadistic slaves, fighting and killing on his command. The notion that those they murder will be tortured by their god, somehow makes genocide more palatable. No doubt about it. And yet, Allah whose approach is entirely fatalistic and capricious, which are mutually exclusive concepts. The un ten god decides everyone's fate based upon his whims. It's either a decadent garden of despicable behaviors or a painful punishment. Ever the hypocrite, the devil who admitted that he was the great subjugator of his slaves, continues to attack those who rival him as al zalamina cruel tyrants, subjugators and oppressors. Quran translators would have Muslims believe that Zalim speaks of disbelievers and wrongdoers, but that simply isn't true. And if it were, the crime wouldn't fit the punishment. However, in a way, the adversary is correct in that, in death, he provides life. Those who die spreading his venom and who have tormented God's people at his command as jihadists and terrorists promoting Islam will be awakened to an eternity in Shi'a'l. Therefore, from mortal death to eternal life, just not in a garden of bliss. Repeating a lie does not make it true. Apart from conceiving religions, Allah who contributed nothing of value. Quran 42.011 Creator the heavens and the earth. He made for you mates from yourselves, and for the cattle mates. By this means he creates you. There is nothing like unto him. And he the all-hearer, the all-seer. Quran 42.012 Lahu to him keys of the heavens and the earth. He extends the provision for whom he wills and restricts. Lo, he of everything all-knower. Yahuwah is the creator. He only told us so once, and then he explained the process so that we would understand. His accounting is found in the opening lines of Baris YTH Genesis. By contrast, Lahu for him created nothing, and yet, he claims to be the creator hundreds of times, albeit not at the beginning of the Quran, which is the only place such a claim belongs. Adversaries are a shekel a dozen. Frankly, there have always been more people opposed to the truth, and to both God and Yisrael, than have supported them. 11 However, Yahuwah isn't an all-seer or all-hearer. Considering the nature of man, this would be miserable and counterproductive, and God isn't a masochist or foolish. So Lahu for him discredits himself with this boast. Moreover, while Satan is despondent, it is due to his incompetence, not his prowess. There are no keys to heaven or hell. Neither Peter nor Allah holds these fanciful things. Souls either dissipate or enter one or the other based on their choices. An all-knower should have been aware of this reality. However, Allah who isn't trying to convey something useful to men but, instead, something he can use to manipulate them. As a surprise to many, God is vehemently opposed to religion. He views it as a control mechanism deployed to manipulate and fleece his people. And without exception, all religions misrepresent God's name, instructions, intent, and nature. However, for all of the reasons Yahuwah disdains religion, Satan ordains it. But he can't even do that without pilfering what doesn't belong to him. Quran 42.013 He has ordained for you the religion what he ordained for Nah, Noah, and that which we have revealed to you, and what we enjoined upon Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, and Isa, Jesus, to establish the religion, and make no divisions, i.e. no various sects in religion. Intolerable for al mushrikan criminals, the polytheists, what you call them to it. Allah who chooses for himself whom he wants, and guides to himself who turns. Noach is known to us exclusively through the Torah. He was not religious. Allah who was not part of his story. 
And there is no correlation between the Torah and the Quran. In fact, Noach and his family were expressly spared because they were not religious. If not for the Torah, no one would have heard of Abraham. He was overtly anti-religious, having left Babylon prior to engaging in the covenant relationship with Yahuwah. There was no mention of Allahu in that story, either. Abraham provides the ultimate referendum between twelve the ill effects of religion and the benefits of engaging in a familial relationship with God. It is through Moses that we come to know Yahuwah as one and only name, a name that is not Allahu. It is through Moses that we are introduced to the means to emancipate ourselves from false gods like Allah rather than be subjugated and enslaved by them. It is through Moses that we are blessed with the Torah, an inspired text that is the antithesis of the Quran. Apart from wooing the ignorant by claiming these three men on behalf of Islam, Allah continues to reveal that he is Satan seeking to replace Yahuwah. There is no other rational explanation for constantly misappropriating the things of God to claim to be God. For example, Isa is either a transliteration of Esau, whom God hated, or Jesus, who never existed. And the religion ascribed to the latter exists to denounce Yahuwah's Torah and people, especially Moses. Moreover, making three religions one is nearly four thousand religions shy of the number that would have to be adapted to Satan's whims for his claims to be true. Therefore, Allah lied, doing so because he wanted to play God. He just isn't very good at it. The devil's agenda is transparent. Allah craves, 1, worship him as if he were God, 2, prostrate oneself to him in submission, 3, surrender as a slave renouncing free will, 4, reject everything and everyone associated with Yahuwah, including God's name, 5, accept the Quran's lies as true and believe the truth is a lie, 6, obey Allah and Muhammad, 7, consent to being taxed, 8, surrender one's wealth to spread Islam, 9, fight, kill, and die without relenting, 10, believe in the day of doom, 11, hate Jews, and 12, don't ask questions. Nor think. For those like me who have studied the textual history of the Torah and Prophets, the Christian New Testament, and the Quran, we know that Allah invalidated his claim to 13 be God by stating that the Torah and Gospels were the same prior to the Quran. It is factually untrue. Quran 42.014 They did not become divided until after the knowledge come to them, through selfish rivalry between themselves. And had it not been for a word that went forth before from your Lord for an appointed term, the matter would have been settled between them. And verily, those who were made to inherit the book, i.e. the Torah, Torah, and the Injil, Gospel, after them, Jews and Christians, are surely in doubt concerning it disquieting. Quran 42.015 So unto this, religion of Islam, alone and this Quran, then invite, and istikim, i.e. stand firm on Islamic monotheism by performing all that is ordained by Allah, as you are commanded. And follow not their desires but say, I believe in whatsoever Allah who has sent down of the book, all the holy books, this Quran, the books of the old from the Taurat, or the Injil or the pages of Ibrahim, and I am commanded to judge between you. Allah who is our Rabbuna and your Rabbukam. For us our deeds and for you your deeds. No dispute between us and between you. Allah who will assemble us between and to him the final return. The Torah and Quran are opposites. They are not the same now, and they were never similar. Further, the New Testament replaces Yahuwah, Jews, Israel, the Torah, Covenant, Messiah, Son of God, and Yahuwah's invitations, beginning with Passover, with religious alternatives, so they are not remotely similar. And the New Testament has nothing in common with the Quran. Simply stated, Allah is a liar. It is both obvious and irrefutable. Quran 42.016 And those who dispute concerning Allah he aft what response has been made to him, their argument is invalidated with their Lord. And upon them is wrath. And for them is a painful punishment. That is Allah's lone retort. Unable to win thinking people over with his testimony, Allah threatens a painful punishment. And if he said it once, that would be one time too many. It is sadistic, not godly. 14 Whenever Allah who says, certainly, surely, without a doubt, lo, verily, or in truth, he's lying. Quran 42.017 Allahu the one who sent down al kitabah the book in truth and the balance. And what will make you know? Perhaps the hour near. Since Allahu couldn't muster up a book for Muhammad, his only actual Razuli, one might readily surmise he didn't provide one for those he never knew. What's interesting here is the balance since Muslims haven't been given any standard to assess the gravity of an offense or merit of a good deed. For example, one would think that lying about some things as horrible as eternal torment might tip the scale, putting Allahu in jeopardy of a painful punishment. Further, the un-God said, some 1,400 years ago, that the hour was near. That would be untrue. In contrast to Yahuwah, who is uninterested in disbelievers, Allahu is tormented by them. They receive the full intensity of his wrath. And that frustrates him all the more because he is all bluster and no bite. Quran 42.018 Seek to hasten it those who not believe in it and those who believe are fearful of it and know that it the truth. Unquestionably, surely, those who dispute concerning the hour certainly in far error. Quran 42.019 Allahu subtle with his slaves. He gives provision to whom he wills. And he the strong, the mighty. Quran 42.020 Whoever is desiring harvest of the hereafter we increase for him in his harvest. And whoever is desiring harvest of the world, we give him of it. But not for him in the hereafter any share. In actuality, Allah can't deliver on any of his promises. He has no influence on any harvest or business endeavor on earth and even less sway in heaven. Yahuwah adores his partners and co-workers. Those who have served alongside Yahuwah include Adam, Noach, Abraham, Sarah, Yitchak, Yaakov, Mose, 15, Aharon, Yahusha, Shamuel, Daud, Shalomo, Yashaya, Yermiah, Hausha, Elia, Zachariah, and Malachi. Allah, like most snakes, is a loner. 
Quran 42.021, or for them partners who have instituted for them a religion which Allah has not allowed. And if not a decisive word, the matter would have been judged between them. And verily, for al Zalim and cruel oppressors who enslave and subjugate as dictatorial tyrants, polytheists and wrongdoers, there is a painful punishment for them. Quran 42.022 You will see the Zalim and tyrants, polytheists and wrongdoers, fearful of that which they earned, and it will surely befall them, while those who believe, in Islam, and do good deeds in the flowering meadows of al Janadi, the gardens, having what they wish from their Lord. That at the great fadli favor and advantage. The only Zalim cruel oppressors who enslave and subjugate in this story are Allah and Muhammad. As the worst of hypocrites, they are what they condemn. Fortunately, by October 7, 2033, the beginning of Sukkah in year 6000 Yah, they will be no more. Every mosque will be obliterated and Muslim expunged, ceasing to exist, so that the earth can return to the conditions enjoyed during Eden. Unfortunately, Islam has been allowed to metastasize and many more will be subjugated and die before this disease is eradicated. So, there will be a garden, it just won't have any Muslims in it. And that will be most advantageous. Quran 42.023 That which Allah who gives glad tidings to his slaves who believe and do good deeds, say, Not I ask you for it any payment except be kind to me for my kinship with you. And whoever earns any good, we will increase for him therein good. Lo, Allah oft forgiving, most appreciative. Quran 42.024 Or say they, he has invented a lie against Allahi. But if Allah who willed, he could seal over your heart. And Allah who wipes out the falsehood and establishes the truth by his words. Lo, he knowing of what the breasts. 16 Quran 42.025 And he the one who accepts the repentance of his slaves and pardons of the evil and he knows what you do. Quran 42.026 And he answers those who believe and do right deeds and increase them from his advantage and favor. And the disbelievers for them a severe punishment. The most appropriate glad tiding which can be offered to a slave is emancipation. But that is the antithesis of what Allahu is providing. Similarly, the good that Allah requires and promises is bad, whether it be believing that Satan is God and killing for him or orgies and fires in paradise or hell. While it should be obvious, since Muslims are oblivious, let's be clear, a painful punisher is not merciful. And the most meaningful lie that could be brought against Allahu is to call him God. This is the falsehood that must be wiped out for humankind to survive. When evil is pardoned, chaos reigns. So, to protect the innocent, and to be compassionate, we should oppose evil. To be moral, we must come to despise rape and rapists, pedophilia and pedophiles, sexual abuse and sexual predators, kidnap and abductors, slavery and those who enslave, murder and mass murderers, terror and terrorists, and more than any of these evil things and individuals, any religion which encourages, condones, rewards, and celebrates them. Remember, this surah, Ashura the Council and Consultation, along with those which follow, was recited as the destitute gang of Muslims arrived in Yathrib following twelve years of abject failure in Petra. Rather than admitting that he had been outmaneuvered by men, and exposed as an imposter, Allah doubled down, tightening his grip on his slaves. Quran 42.027 If Allah who extend the provision for his slaves, lo, they would rebel in the earth, but he sends down in measure what he wants. Lo, he of his slaves aware, seer. 17 Quran 42.028 And he the one who sends down the rain from after what they have despaired and spreads his merch. And he the protector, the praiseworthy. Quran 42.029 And among his proofs, creation of the heavens and the earth and whatever he has dispersed in both of them of creatures. He over their gathering when he wills powerful. Quran 42.030 And whatever befalls you of misfortune of what your hands have earned. But he pardons from much. From demonic beginning to devilish end, the Quran remains focused on Allah's agenda. It's all about what the devil wants. And foremost among these things is to be perceived as God, to be in control, to be seen as the one responsible for everything, to be praiseworthy, and to be perceived as all-seeing, all-knowing, and invincible. However, since Allah who is incapable, vulnerable, and condemnable, there is no proof otherwise. There were never any signs. Quran 42.031 And not you escape in the earth and not for you from besides Allahi any wali and not any nasir. Quran 42.032 And among his proofs, the ships in the sea like mountains. Based upon Allahi's claims, a person has to be either willfully ignorant or completely irrational to believe that he is God. Ships upon the sea were designed, constructed, and helmed by men, not a wannabe God. Allahi is not a wali protector from anything, including himself, and he is Nasir friend to no one, including himself. Quran 42.033 If he wills, he can cause the wind to become still then they would remain motionless on its back. Lo, in that surely proofs for everyone patient, grateful. Quran 42.034 Or he could destroy them for what they have earned but he pardons from much. Quran 42.035 And may know those who dispute concerning our signs not for them any place of refuge. 18 Quran 42.036 So whatever you are given of a thing but a passing enjoyment for the life of the world. But what with Allahi better and more lasting for those who believe and upon their Lord put trust. One of the many reasons Allahi is failing in his audition to play the role of God is that he is myopic. He is unaware of the interplay between natural phenomena, such as wind and sea, currents and buoyancy. His claim to be able to make ships motionless by stilling the winds is only a sign that he ought not to be trying to fool anyone. And realizing that he is a fraud, the imposter and counterfeiter threatens those with the sense to dispute his claims. In the process, he devalues and degrades the life. Quran 42.037 And those who avoid greater sins and the immoralities, when and why they are angry, they forgive. 
According to what we have read thus far, and this is our 68th complete surah, the greatest sins are inventing a lie against the un-god, associating partners with him, disbelieving or disobeying, then refusing to fund and fight in Allah whose cause. Quran 42.038 And those who respond to their Lord and perform prostration prayer and their affairs consultation among them from what we have provided them, they spend. Quran 42.039 And those who when strikes them tyranny, they defend themselves. Quran 42.040 Recompense of an evil and evil like it. But whoever pardons and makes reconciliation then his reward on Allahi. Verily he not like al zalim cruel subjugators and enslaving dictators. By referring to himself as a lord, by requiring prostration prayers, and by demanding money, Allahi distinguishes himself from Yahuwah, who is opposed to each of these things. Therefore, defending oneself and others from cruelty and tyranny is courageous and compassionate, but the Lord calls it evil because he is the cruel tyrant and subjugator of his slaves. 19 Quran 42.041 Surely, whosoever defends himself after he has been wronged, then those not against them any way. Quran 42.042 Only the way against those who zalim and oppress and subjugate, who are cruel enslavers of the people and rebel in the earth without right. Those, for them, a painful punishment. We have returned to word salad mode. The previous three verses are incomprehensible, as are those that follow, all of which are literal and accurate renderings of the underlying Arabic. Quran 42.043 Whoever patient and forgives indeed, lo, that surely of matters of determination. Quran 42.044 And whoever Allah who lets go astray, then not Lahu for him any wali after him. And you will see Al's eliminate cruel oppressive enslavers when they see the punishment, saying, is for return any way. Quran 42.045 You will see them exposed to it, humiliated, looking with a stealthy glance. And will say those who believed, lo, the losers those who lost themselves and their families on the resurrection day. Unquestionably, al zalim in a lasting punishment. Quran 42.046 And not will be for them any wali will help them form besides Allahi and whom Allah who lets go astray, then not Lahu for him any way. It is apparent that the most zalim wants mankind humiliated and punished. And while human civilization has been rife with cruel lords and tyrants and ripe with subjugation and slavery, Allahi works alone. Quran 42.047 Respond to your Lord from before that comes a day no averting for it from Allahi. Not for you any refuge that day, and not for you any denial. Quran 42.048 Then if they turn away then not we have sent you for them a guard. Not on you except the conveyance. And, lo, verily, when we cause the man to taste from us mercy, he rejoices in it, but if befalls them evil, for what have their hands sent forth, then lo, verily the man ungrateful. 20 Quran 42.049 The law he domination the heavens and the earth. He creates what he wills. He grants to whom he wills females and he grants to whom he wills the males. Quran 42.050 Or he grants the males and females and makes whom he wills barren. Lo, he knower, powerful. While Allah he will meet his doom, it will not be on his day or in his way. Moreover, to avoid being caught up in it, read the Torah, engage in the Barith, and respond to the Mikri Y. To learn how, should you not already know, visit yadaya.com and begin reading. When Yahuwah returns with the Messiah Daud on behalf of Yisrael on Yom Kippur and the Day of Reconciliations in year 1600 Yah, beginning at sunset, October 2, 2033, there will be more denial than acceptance, so the Lord is wrong yet again. Unless someone is working alongside Yahuwah for the benefit of his people, there are no guards. And when the Malayke are assigned this role, they protect Yahuwah's associates from being harmed by Muslims. Yahuwah began communicating through prophets, and in writing, when his people became uncomfortable with his presence during the Yatza exodus. From that time forward, men like Mose, Yahusha, Shamuel, Daud, Yashaya, and Yermia were chosen and inspired to write down what Yahuwah revealed to them. Every prophet was a Yisraelite, and they all proved their calling by passing the Dabram 18 test Yahuwah delineated for them and us. They all conveyed the same message from Yahuwah, without contradiction or error. Pursuant to Daud's comprehensive and timely revelation as Gabriel to Daniel, with his arrival as the Messiah and Lamb of God to fulfill Chag Matzah in year 400 Yah, there would be no more prophets. And therefore, Muhammad cannot be one since he fails at every level. 21 Apart from his den in the searing sands of Arabia, Balahi has no dominion. And based upon his need to counterfeit Yahuwah's testimony, the Lord of Islam isn't creative. He isn't very smart either, having failed basic anatomy. The sex of an animal is determined by the X and Y chromosomes of the spermatozoan which fertilize the ovum. Should a spermatozoan with an X chromosome arrive first, then a girl, XX, will be born, and should a sperm with a Y chromosome prevail, the mother will deliver a boy, XY. Life must be miserable and lonely for Allahu. Quran 42.051 Not as for any human that Allahu should speak to him except revelation or from behind a veil or sending a messenger then he reveals by his permission what he wills. Lo, he most high, most wise. Quran 42.052 Thus we have revealed an inspiration to you by our command. Not you know what the book and not the faith, but we have made it a light. We guide with it whom we ill of our slaves. And lo, you guide to straight path. Yahuwah conceived us because he enjoys our company and relishes meaningful conversations. While I do more listening than conversing, we speak every day. But such is not the case with Satan. He disdains humans and sees us as lowly slaves to manipulate and abuse. It is most lowly and unwise of him. So, there should be no doubt that the inspiration of the Quran was reptilian. And while there was no book, necessitating faith, and no enlightenment, precluding understanding, there was enslavement. Quran 42.053 Path Allahi the one to whom whatever in the heavens and whatever in the earth. Unquestionably, to Allahi reach all affairs. 
It is little wonder that Allah he constantly claims, whatever in the heavens and whatever in the earth, because he does not know, or he would have used awareness as a sign. 22 While Yahuwah didn't say, since Satan has insinuated it in the Quran and has admitted it in the book of Ezekiel, it is safe to say that he was among the Carabim cherubs guarding the Gan Eden. Back then, just 10 years shy of 6,000 years ago, he was clever in the way he misappropriated and misconstrued Yahuwah's instructions to beguile and demean Adam and Chawa. But as a consequence of this crime against humanity, Halal ben Shakar, the Carab run amok, was degraded from serpentine to snake, excluded from heaven and destined to crawl on his belly and eat dirt. Garbage in, garbage out. And now, having slithered into the deserts of Arabia to find the most ignorant of men, this snake is doing his best to deceive, he's just no longer clever, necessitating a new, less informed, and literate audience. But this would explain why the Quran is so poorly written, why its claims are so easily refuted, and why it is so demeaning and demonic. It also explains why we little Paula is incapable of doing anything and is miserable in this regard. He hates what Yahuwah did to him as a consequence of his duplicity and is bent on revenge. The snake lashes out three ways. He misappropriates and corrupts Yahuwah's testimony, making it more difficult to know God. He deceives and denigrates humankind in an attempt to diminish Yahuwah's affinity for us and to make mankind easier to control. And he uses religion to create the illusion that he, rather than Yahuwah, is God. But he's no longer impressive or clever. The following hadith from Sahih Bukhari accurately conveys the change in Islam at this moment from an utterly moronic and immoral, manipulative and sadistic religion to a death cult inspired to die killing in Allah's cause. 23 Bukhari v 2 b 54 and 47, Allah's apostle said, There is no hijra, migration from Mecca to Medina, after the conquest, but jihad and good intention remain, and if you are called, by the Muslim ruler, for fighting, go forth immediately. Bukhari v 2 b 54 and 96, the Muhajran, emigrants, and the Ansar, helpers, started digging the trench around Medina carrying the earth on their backs and saying, We are those who have given the bayah, pledge of allegiance, to Muhammad that we will I carry on jihad as long as we live. The Prophet kept on replying, O oh Allah, there is no good except the good of the hereafter, so confer your blessings on the Ansar and the Muhajran. As a harbinger of days to come, Muslims, now bent on killing, were occupying Jewish land while complaining about the Jews who had made it habitable. To set the scene, we continue our journey into the mindset of the adversary and the devil's advocate with al-Jathiya crouching. Quran 45.001 Hi M.E.M., none but Allah knows their meaning. Quran 45.002 Revelation, the book from Allahi, mighty, wise. Quran 45.003 Lo, in the heavens and the earth, surely signs for the believers. Quran 45.004 In your creation and what he dispenses of moving creatures, signs for a people who are certain. To say that the Quran is repetitive to a fault is too kind. If the revelation of Allahi were paired of redundancy, it would be a pamphlet. Since the un-God is insistent on claiming that he provided a book, be aware that the first written book containing some semblance of these oral recitals would not exist for another four generations, passed along via hearsay an entire century after they were revealed. Therefore, the non-book could not have been a sign. Nor was the earth. Just because he was condemned to eat it does not mean Satan conceived it. Yes, I know the old adage, you are what you eat, but it does not apply to the snake who was rebuked for what he had done to separate man from God. 24 Bukhari v 6 b 61 n 502 The Prophet remained in Mecca for 10 years, during which the Quran used to be revealed to him, and he stayed in Medina for 10 years. According to this hadith, from the most highly respected source, only 10 years, not 12, transpired from the first horrible revelation in the cave to the Hijra. And once in Yathrib, there were other priorities since Quran recitals weren't mentioned after the declaration of war. This known, the following hadith suggests otherwise, that the revelations were more frequent just prior to Muhammad's death. Bukhari v 6 b 61 n 505, Allah sent down his divine inspiration to his apostle continuously and abundantly during the period preceding his death till he took him unto him. That was the period of the greatest part of revelation, and Allah's messenger died after that. Not only are contradictions like this proof that neither the non-prophet or the un-god can be trusted, the evidence is in conflict with this declaration. Based on the content, some 90 surahs were first recited in Petra, leaving no more than 24 revealed in Yathrib. Moreover, this deplorable excuse for divine inspiration was Muhammad's only miracle, and thus sign. Bukhari v 6 b 61 n 504, the Prophet said, Every Prophet was given miracles because of which people believed, but what I have been given, is divine inspiration which Allah has revealed to me. So I hope that my followers will outnumber the followers of the other Prophets on the day of resurrection. In other words, what we are reading is Muhammad's and Allah's best and only shot at demonstrating their claims to be Prophet and God. Are you impressed? Before we continue, be aware. Bukhari v 6 b 61 n 506, once the Prophet fell ill and did not offer the night prayer for a night or two. A woman, the wife of Abu Lahab, came to him and said, O Muhammad. I do not see but that your Satan has left you. Then Allah revealed, Surat ad duha 93, by the forenoon, and by the night when it darkens, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor hated you. We should be appreciative of al-Bukhari retaining and sharing this hadith, affirming that the non-prophet's Lord 25 was none other than Satan. He had possessed Muhammad during the dark and demonic episode in the cave when the first surah was revealed, and he had not forsaken his messenger. Quran 45.005, alternation of the night and the day and what Allah who sends down from the sky of provision and gives life thereby the earth after its death and directing winds, proof for a people who reason. Quran 45.006 These proofs of Allahi we recite them to you in truth. Then in what statement after Allahi and his proofs will they believe? Quran 45.007 Woe to every sinful liar Quran 45.008 Who hears signs and verses of Allahi recited to him then persists arrogantly as if not he heard them. 
so give the happy tidings of a painful punishment. Allah who must progress beyond gibberish before anyone is asked to believe that he sent down celestial provisions, alternates day and night, and killed the earth so that he might revive it. We has his head so far down the snake hole he wouldn't know the truth if it bit him on the tail. So, if we are to, woe every sinful liar, wouldn't the Lord of lies be the first to fall? Allah he persists in his arrogant puffery. So, let's offer the happy tidings of a painful punishment. Since he is so disheveled over having been reduced from cherub cherub to snake, he's not much going to like the demotion from the earth to Xiao. And horror of horrors, he will be surrounded by his partners in crime. Muhammad was not a happy camper and, therefore, death would ensue. Bukhari v 9 b 88 and 182, once the Prophet stood over one of the high buildings of Medina and then said, to the people, do you see what I see? They said, no, he said, I see afflictions falling among your houses as raindrops fall. Bukhari v 9 b 88 and 183, the Prophet said, time will pass rapidly, good deeds will decrease, miserliness will be thrown, in the hearts of the people, afflictions will appear and there will be much al-harj. They said, O oh Allah's Apostle. What is al-harj? He said, killing. 26 killing. This is the Islam of Yathrib, the Islam that survived Muhammad and haunts us today. Quran 45.009, when he knows of our signs and verses anything he takes them in ridicule. Those, for them, a humiliating punishment. Quran 45.010, before them is hell. And not will avail them what they earned anything, nor what they had taken from besides Allahi as Wali. For them a great punishment. Quran 45.011, this guidance. And those who disbelieve in signs and verses of their Lord for them a filthy and painful punishment. Quran 45.012 Allahu, the one who subjugated to you the sea that the ships may sail therein by his command and that you may seek of his merit and advantage and that you may give thanks. Prior to being compelled into Islam submission by threat of death, given a choice, most everyone rejected ours, signs and verses. They ridiculed them, just as we are doing today. Rather than prove his claims and validate his recitals with the conveyance of useful knowledge, an accurate depiction of science or history, or with prophecy, the ungod retreats to bluster. He is a fondless snake, pretending otherwise to keep from being stomped into the ground. The most acclaimed of punishers wants to be appreciated by his slaves for all of the good he is doing. This is like Dr. Joseph Mengel, the angel of death, expecting a mother to be thankful that her daughter will be tortured instead. Let it be known, Allah is the great subjugator. Quran 45.013, he has subjected to you whatever is in the heavens and whatever in the earth all from him. Lo, in that surely are proofs for a people who give thought. Quran 45.014 say to those who believe to forgive those who not hope for the day of Allahi that he may recompense a people for what they used to earn. 27 Quran 45.015 Whoever does a good deed, then it is for his soul, and whoever does evil, then it against it. Then to your Lord you will be returned. Quran 45.016 Certainly, we gave children of Israel al kitabah the writing, and al hukmah the wisdom, the Psalms, and al nabiwata the prophethood, and we provided them of the good things and we preferred them over the al alamina worlds of men and jinn. Lo, verily, delusions of grandeur serve as signs. However, just because he was allowed to meet with two people in the garden does not mean we will return to him. Yahuwah, who just so happens to be God, inspired the Torah, prophets, and Psalms, giving this enlightening and enriching treasure to the children of Israel. Allah was not mentioned and made no contribution to those scrolls. Although, should he claim them, we can credit the adversary with books such as Enoch, Ezekiel, and Esther, Job and Jonah. And while they also work against him, no doubt, Satan played the lead role inspiring the books of the Christian New Testament and Judaism's Talmud and Zohar. But there were no actual prophets among such men, which is similar to the Quran in this regard. However, I'm not buying into the notion that Allah favored Jews over Gentiles, especially Romans, Greeks, and Arabs, since the evidence is otherwise. Satan is committed to their annihilation, as is evident by his religion's diabolical and militant actions against Israel in 1948, 1967, 1973, 1987, 2000, 2006, and 2023. Once again, we find the snake burying himself in his own delusions. The Torah has not changed, proof of which is provided by the Dead Sea Scrolls, which predate Islam by as much as a millennium. And the Quran emerged as the antithesis of it. Therefore, there is no possibility whatsoever that the Torah and Quran differed only after the Quran was recited. 28 This incredulously infers that the Torah was altered by the Jews in Yathrib who sold Muhammad Talmud recitals to embarrass him. That being the case, they must have been very industrious. They not only managed to find all of the Dead Sea Scrolls six centuries after they were placed within the caves below Jerusalem, but they erased every word and rewrote them, only to hide them again. And then they went into Persia and did the same to the scrolls which became known as the Masoretic Text. They would also have had to have found every copy of the Talmud, both Jerusalem and Babylonian, then erased and rewritten them too, since they frequently cite the Torah. And they would have had to have done so after Muhammad started demeaning them but before he annihilated them. Quran 45.017 We gave them signs of the matter. And not they differed except from after what came to them the knowledge envy between themselves. Lo, Rabaka your Lord will judge between them resurrection day about what they used to therein differ. Quran 45.018 Then we put you on a commanded and predestined way of the matter so follow it and do not follow desire of those who do not know. Then he'll be a busy little serpent because there is no point of agreement between the Torah and Quran. And methinks the snake will have much bigger problems, such as his eternal damnation in Xiao. No doubt, Satan needs his desires to be perceived as predestined. While untrue, like everything else, it's his final Hail Mary. He wants God and man to simply give up and let him have his way. Proving the point. 
Quran 45.019, Lo, never will avail you against Allahi anything. And verily, Al-Zalim cruel oppressors and subjugators with slaves, some of them allies of others. And Allah who wali the just. Quran 45.020 This enlightenment for mankind and guidance, a mercy for people who are certain. The bane of predestination is that nothing else matters, including the Quran, Muhammad, or Islam. 29 Quran 45.021 Do think those who commit evil deeds that we will make them like those who believed and did good deeds equal in their life and death. Evil is what they judge. Quran 45.022 Allah who created the heavens and the earth in truth and that may be recompensed every soul for what it has earned and they will not be wronged. Islam's good deeds are all bad, and what Allah who condemns is almost always good. Similarly, truth is inverted, such that the created and malfunctioning claims to be the creator in perfect order, creator, perfect order, order, repeat, jumble, repeat. And never be too proud to toss in an occasional word salad to keep them guessing. Quran 45.023 Have you seen who takes his God his desire and Allah who lets him go astray knowingly? And he puts a seal upon his hearing and his heart and a veil over his vision. Then who will guide him from after Allahi? Then will not you receive a warning? Quran 45.024 They say, not it but our life of the world. We die and we live. And not destroys us except the time. So not for them of that any knowledge. Not they but guess. Quran 45.025 And when are recited to them are signs and verses clear, not is their argument except that they say, Bring our forefathers if you are truthful. Quran 45.026 Say, Allah who gives you life then causes you to die. Then he will gather you to the resurrection day, no doubt about it. But most the people not know. Theirs was a thoughtful retort. Since Allah who was bragging about reassembling everyone from decayed bones, why not prove it by doing a little show and tell with their fathers and grandfathers? But inept as snakes are in such matters, Allah who shimmied out of the way and hissed, I can really, really, do it, no doubt about it, but not right now, not on command because it's only on the predestined resurrection day which never seems to come. But most people know not. You believe me, don't you? 30 Quran 45.027 For the lahi domination of the heavens and the earth and the day is established, the hour that they will lose the falsifiers. Quran 45.028 And you will see every nation kneeling. Every nation will be called to its record. Today you will be recompensed for what you used to do. Quran 45.029 This our record speaks about you in truth. Lo, we, ourselves, transcribe what you used to do. Quran 45.030 Then as for those who believed and did good deed will admit them their Lord in his mercy that it the clear success. The closer the antagonists get to the truth, the bigger the snakes bluster. Now, rather than individual disbelievers being shackled and tortured, it's entire nations prostrating themselves in recompense for what the nation did to irritate the adversary. And that's hard to imagine, considering the history of civilization. Quran 45.031 But as for those who disbelieved, then were not my signs or verses recited to you but you were proud and you became a people criminals. Quran 45.032 And when it was said, Lo, promise of Allah he true and the hour no doubt about it you said, not we know what the hour. Not we think except an assumption and not we convinced. The one who disavowed and sought to replace God's testimony is calling the informed and rational disbelievers. The most arrogant of spirits is besmirching the thoughtful by labeling them proud. The most notorious criminal of all time, the ungod who sanctioned armed robbery, kidnapping, rape, and mass murder, even terrorism and disavowing sworn oaths, is accusing those who didn't participate in his crime of being crooks. No doubt about it. Proven no less by snappy dialogue. Quran 45.033 Appear to them evil what they did and envelop them what they added mock. Quran 45.034 It will be said, Today we forget you as you forgot meeting this day of yours and your abode the fire and not for you any helpers. 31 Quran 45.035 That because you took signs and verses of Allahi in ridicule and deceived you the life the world. So this day not they will be brought forth from it and not they will be asked to appease. Quran 45.036 Then all praise for I Allahi, Rabbi of the heavens Rabbi the earth, Rabbi the worlds. Should the snake prevail and eliminate all thoughtful and rational people, should his goons apply sufficient coercion, all praise would be for the Rabbi of the worlds. Quran 45.037 And Lahu for him, the greatness in the heavens and the earth. And he the strong, the wise. Methinks not, but that is because methinks. Nevertheless, the more for him boasts, popping scales in self-adulation, the easier it becomes to identify this Lord with the Lord of the ultimate satanic prophecy found in Yashaya Isesh 14. Continuing to stroke his own ego, Lalahi would have his dim-witted slaves believe. Quran 57.001 Glorifies Lalahi whatever in the heavens and the earth and he the Almighty, the wise. Quran 57.002 Lahu for him dominion the heavens and the earth. He gives life and causes death and he over all things all powerful. Quran 57.003 He the first and the last, the apparent and the unapparent. He of everything knower. Quran 57.004 He the one who create the heavens and earth in six days then he rose over the throne. He knows what penetrates in the earth and what comes forth from it and what descends from heaven and what ascends therein. And he with you wherever you are. And Allah who of what you do all seer. Quran 57.005 Lahu for him dominion the heavens and earth and to Allahi are returned the matters. Beyond the fact Yahuwah is God and Allah is Satan, one brilliant and the other dim-witted, one caring and the other demented, one influential and the other impotent, among the most glaring differences between Yahuwah and this imposter is that God wants to elevate humankind while Lahu 32 is fixated on elevating himself while demeaning everyone else. 
Yahuwah knows who he is, and since it is obvious to those who listen to him that he is God, he does not have to tell us he is great, wise, mighty, powerful, knowing, seeing, or that he has dominion. But since Allahi is none of these things, he is a broken pen when it comes to delusional platitudes. The Quran is an orgy of self-entitlement and aggrandizement. And, of course, the non-prophet was ever ready to stroke his un-God's ego. Bukhari v 9b93 and 482, the prophet used to invoke Allah at night, saying, O Allah, all the praises are for you, you are the Lord of the heavens and the earth. All the praises are for you, you are the maintainer of the heaven and the earth and whatever is in them. All the praises are for you, you are the light of the heavens and the earth. Your word is the truth, and your promise is the truth, and the meeting with you is the truth, and paradise is the truth, and the, hell, fire is the truth, and the hour is the truth. O Allah! I surrender myself to you, and I believe in you and I depend upon you, and I repent to you and with you, your evidences, I stand against my opponents, and to you I leave the judgment, for those who refuse my message. O Allah! Forgive me my sins that I did in the past or will do in the future, and also the sins I did in secret or in public. You are my only God and there is no other God for me. And who is to disagree with the beliefs and opinions of such an infamously immoral, illiterate, and ignorant non-profit caught up in the conveyance of the most wretched of recitals? Quran 57.006 He merges the night into the day and he merges the day into the night and he all-knower of what is in the breasts. Quran 57.007 Believe in Ayah and his Razulai and spend of what he has made you trustees therein. Those who believe among you and spend for them a great reward. If he were an all-knower, he would have known that night and day are not merged, but a function of the earth's rotation on its axis. Normally, my advice to the ignorant is 33 for them to get out and explore, and read a little too, but since Allah is a snake, will leave him in his hole to rot. As for spending to win a prize, that is the purpose of this surah. Ayolahi and his Razuli were broke. To survive, they would either have to start working and contribute something worthwhile, try to con Jews into loaning them some money, or steal it. So fundamentally opposed to earning a living by doing something productive and not yet strong enough to succeed as an armed gang of thieves, the non-prophet and his un-god were begging for loot. Indiscriminate, Allah would begin by plundering his own. Quran 57.008 And what for you not you believe in Ayolahi and Al-Razuli calls you that you believe in Rabbikum. And, lo, verily he has taken your pledge if you are believers. Quran 57.009 He, the one who sends down upon his slave signs and verses clear that he may bring you out from the darkness into the light. Lo, Allah to you most kind, most merciful. The prince of darkness has a light. And you'll find it just as soon as someone locates one of his signs. However, remember, Islam is cash up front, pay now with your money, morals, and soul, and the ever duplicitous promises to honor his bargain with a lifetime stay in a whorehouse for retired jihadists. With a deal like that and an infinite roll of coupons to ravage an unending supply of child virgins, it's little wonder his slaves are ready to kill for access. Not everyone was conditioned to slay now, pay later. Quran 57.010 So what is the matter with you that you do not spend in Allahi's cause while Allahi is the heritage of the heavens and the earth? Not equal among you who spent from before the victory and fought. Those are greater in degree than those who spent from after and fought. But to all, Allah who has promised the best. And Allah who all aware of what you do. Quran 57.011 Who the one who will loan Allah a goodly loan. He will multiply it lahu for him and lahu for him a noble reward. 34 Perhaps some may have balked because dealing with the devil seemed to be a bad idea. Others may have rejected the terms, paying up front and in full, for the promise of benefits after death from a merchant who has acknowledged reneging on his vows. And for many, ethical issues caused them to forego indentured servitude, plunder, kidnapping, and mass murder. A few may have decided against living in a whorehouse with scum. But make no mistake, incompetent Allah is demanding that his slaves not only fight and kill for him, but that they also fund the war. So remember, the nicest prizes are for the biggest spenders and most prolific killers. Therefore, you can be a Muslim moron and sponsor a death cult, sacrificing your life to murder non-Muslims. You can opt out and become their next victim. Or you can join me in opposing Islam. But let no one pretend that this is a religion of peace. Islam was in transition mode, from ridiculous religion to justifiable jihad. So, otherwise inept Allah was priming the pump, acquiring blades, and recruiting the men to swing them. Islam would become a criminal enterprise, plundering for profit. And since plundering was a group activity, non-profit was in cahoots with his un-god. Bukhari, V2B24 and 486, narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's apostle said, Whoever is made wealthy by Allah and does not pay the zakat of his wealth, then on the day of resurrection his wealth will be made like a bald-headed poisonous male snake with two black spots over the eyes. The snake will encircle his neck and bite his cheeks and say, I am your wealth, I am your treasure. Then the prophet recited the holy verses, Let not those who withhold. To the end of the verse, dot. Quran 3.180 The penalty for the rich not paying their fair share for the war to annihilate mankind seems more like a promotion in that they will be transformed into little Allahus. Nevertheless, this was no laughing matter. There were people to rob and kill, and mayhem requires money. 35 Bukhari, V2B24 and 489, narrated Alan of bin Kays, while I was sitting with some people from Quraysh, a man with very rough hair, clothes, and appearance came and stood in front of us, greeted us and said, Inform those who hoard wealth, that a stone will be heated in the hellfire and will be put on the nipples of their breasts till it comes out from the bones of their shoulders and then put on the bones of their shoulders till it comes through the nipples of their breasts the stone will be moving and hitting. After saying that, the person retreated and sat by the side of the pillar, I followed him and sat beside him. I did not know who he was. I said to him, I think the people disliked what you said. 
He said, these people do not understand anything, although my friend told me. I asked, who is your friend? He said, the prophet said, O oh, Abudar. Do you see the mountain of Uhud? And on that I, Abudar, started looking towards the sun to judge how much remained of the day as I thought that Allah's apostle wanted to send me to do something for him and I said, yes. He said, I do not love to have gold equal to the mountain of Uhud unless I spend it all, in Allah's cause, except three dinars, pounds. These people do not understand and collect worldly wealth. No, by Allah, neither I ask them for worldly benefits nor am I in need of their religious advice till I meet Allah, the Honorable, the Majestic. Never underestimate Islam's propensity to be cruel. Allah and Muhammad were the best of sadists. They just weren't very good at reciting. Quran 57.012 Day you will see the believing men and believing women running their light before them and on their right, happy tidings for you this day. Gardens flowing from underneath at the rivers abiding forever therein. That at the great, the success. Quran 57.013 Day will say the hypocrite men and hypocrite women to those who believed, wait for us. We may acquire of your light. It will be said, go back behind you and seek light. Then will be put up between them a wall, for it a gate, its interior in it mercy, but its exterior facing towards it, the punishment. Quran 57.014 They will call them, were not we with you? They will say, yes, but you led yourselves to temptation and you awaited and you doubted and deceived you the wishful thinking until 36 came the command of Allahi. Wagarakam and deceived you with Ayallahi, Algaruru the deceiver. The Karab cherub of diminished energy is back, taunting his light even though it was extinguished six millennia ago. And perhaps hoping to be Shakespeare, he resumes his snappy repartee between the bedazzled and the damned. Wait for us. We want virgin boys, too. Let's make a toast with Allah's special brew and indulge in sharing the low-hanging fruit while rafting down the subterranean rivers. But alas, playing off the success of Alexander the Great and reprising the 18th surah, since, we, knew him well, Allahi is also erecting a wall. And this is a magic barrier because this wall creates an interior and exterior, separating heaven and hell by the thinnest of margins. But woe to the stingy because it's too late to invest in murder and mayhem. Quran 57.015 So today, not will be accepted from you any ransom and not from those who disbelieved. Your abode is the fire. It is your place, and wretched is the destination. Quran 57.016 Has not time come for the hearts of those who believe to be affected by Allah's reminder, and what has come down of the truth? And not they become as those who were given the book, the Taurat and Injil, from before. Was prolonged for them the term. So hardened their hearts and many of them phasic and disobedient. So, there you have it, right from the snake's mouth. He only toyed with the Jews and Christian Gentiles for a prescribed period, then he changed teams and decided to cast his lot in with thieves, murderers, perverts, and morons. And in the midst of the great replacement, he made sure that his past wouldn't catch up to him by hardening the hearts of his previous groupies. Should Muslims be curious as to the way Allah treats those whom he has given scripture books, consider the fate of those who preceded them. 37 Bukhari v 4 b 52 and 177 Allah's Messenger said, The hour will not be established until you fight with the Jews, and the stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, O Muslim! There is a Jew hiding behind me, so kill him. In honor of Allah being a rock god, even stones speak for Islam's ungod. Doubling down on material matters, Muhammad added. Bukhari v 4 b 56 n 791 I heard Allah's messenger saying, The Jews will fight with you, and you will be given victory over them so that a stone will say, O Muslim. There is a Jew behind me, kill him. Evidently, the stones are being disobedient. And as a result, Muslims continue to lose every battle. Bukhari v 3 b 15 n 1436 The messenger of Allah stoned a Jew and Jewess. And Muhammad is the exemplar of ideal behavior for all good Muslims to emulate. Bukhari v 1 b 8 n 1428 Allah's messenger said, May Allah's curse be on the Jews for they built the places of worship at the graves of their prophets. While it's not accurate, truth was but a toy to be manipulated by the non-prophet. He wanted those who had shared their books with him and who could, as a result, prove that he was a fraud, silenced. Damning them was the first step along the way. Lying about lying, we find. Bukhari v 1 b 8 n 1428 The messenger of Allah was saying, Allah's curse to be on the Jews, they made the graves of their prophets' mosques. There was also the matter of it seeming more expedient to him to rob and kill them rather than pay off his mounting debt. Bukhari v 3 b 34 and 282 narrated Aisha, the Prophet purchased food grains from a Jew on credit and mortgaged his iron armor to him. No doubt, Muhammad relished that upon its return, it was coated in Jewish blood. The anti-Semite was keen to note. Bukhari v 5 b 44 and 2954, the Prophet said, the Jews are those who Allah is wrath with, and the Christians have strayed. The Jews were troublesome for the non-Prophet for a number of reasons, one of which was that they knew much 38 more than Muhammad. So they teased him by asking questions that anyone familiar with the Torah would know the answers, just to watch him squirm. Bukhari v 1 b 3 n 127 narrated Abdullah, while I was going with the Prophet through Medina and he was reclining on a date palm leaf stalk, some Jews passed by. Some said to the others, ask him about the spirit. Some of them said that they should not ask him that question as he might give a reply which could displease them. But some of them insisted on asking, and so one of them stood up and asked, O oh Abu al-Qasim, what is the spirit? The Prophet remained quiet. I thought he was being inspired divinely. So I stayed till that state of the Prophet, while being inspired, was over. The Prophet then said, and they ask you concerning the Spirit, say, the Spirit, its knowledge is with my Lord. And of knowledge you have been given only a little. Quran 17.085 They were pretentious malcontents, wallowing in their own ignorant delusions of superiority. 
The Ruach, known as the Ruach Kodesh set apart spirit, is the maternal manifestation of Yahuwah's nature. She enlightens, enriches, empowers, nurtures, perfects, and protects the children of the covenant. I know this because I've studied Yahuwah's Torah. And since the non-prophet and un-God claimed that this divinely inspired testimony was confirmed by their Quran, and that Musa was a Muslim, they should have known it, too. Quran 57.017 Know that Allah gives the earth life after its death. Lo, verily, we have made clear to you the signs so that you may understand. Since we've been listening, we know that Allah claimed to have killed the earth and then brought his slave back to life, making it clear proof for those who do not think. So, now, with this reminder, it's back to begging. Quran 57.018 Lo, the men who give donations and the women who give money and who lend Allah a goodly loan, it will be multiplied for them and for them a noble reward. 39 For the really big score and to honor the pledge to annihilate humankind, I Allah he would need martyrs in addition to money, so. Quran 57.019 Those who believe in I Allah and his Razuli, those, they the truthful and al shahado the martyrs with Rabbi him. For them their reward and their light. But those who deny our proofs, those companions of the fire. In Islam, there is no reason to live, only to die. Sure, life is miserable under Islam, and Muslims are haunted by the disparity between them and those not cursed by the Quran, so I Allah he disparaged life in the here and now. Quran 57.020 Know that the life this world only play in amusement, and adornment and boasting among you, and competition and increase of the wealth and the children, like example a rain pleases the tillers, its growth then it dries up and you see it turning yellow, then becomes debris. But in the after a severe tormenting punishment, and forgiveness from Allah he in pleasure, but not the life the world except enjoyment delusion. There are a number of ways to present Allah's impoverished rant. I can mislead by copying and pasting from any of the 66 available translations and provide the false impression that the ungod is quasi-literate. The second option is to add the missing verbs, pronouns, conjugations, articles, and explanations within parentheticals, even though that's misleading because we are apt to read them as if they were actually in the text. Or third, I can present the most accurate and literal rendering possible, but then the message is poorly communicated, and we are left trying to figure out who said what to whom, why, where, and when. Who knew that wannabe gods were so inept and that the Quran was so deficient? In this case, since life is meaningless, why not die killing for the inept god? And how can it be amusing for a slave? How is it adorned? If it is a time for boasting, that cannot be bad since it is Allah's preoccupation. And while forty we compete at many things, it's never for an increase in children. Further, since the ungod is so inept with his metaphors, why must he persist in making a fool of himself? Life is akin to a rain which pleases the tillers, whose growth dries up, you see it turns yellow, then becomes debris. That's so bad, it's shameful. Illiteracy aside, it's on with the slave Olympics. Let every Muslim compete for the stone medal. It's yours if you fund death and die killing in the oneness of Allahu. Quran 57.021 Race one with another towards forgiveness from your Lord, and towards a garden, the width whereof is as the width of heaven and earth, prepared for those who believe in Ayalahi and his messengers. That is the merit of Allahu which he bestows on whom he wills. Allahu is the owner of great advantage. Mind you, the race is in vain because the outcome was fixed. The winners and losers were predestined and the rabbi rubbed Adam's back, producing righties and lefties. Moreover, it is evident that reptiles have wee little brains because the garden cannot be as depicted. The earth is not flat, as Allah who protests, so it has a diameter and a circumference but not a width. And no matter which is chosen for comparison, the universe or heaven. The cosmos isn't finite but, instead, expanding, and at 96 billion light years in diameter currently, the physical bodies Allah intends to reside therein wouldn't be precluded access to 99.999x 10100 of it. And if the spiritual realm, seven dimensions cannot be compared to three dimensions, rendering the measurement absurd. Allahi is easily the most inept wannabe god to ever audition for the part. Quran 57.022 Not strikes any disaster in the earth and not in yourselves but in a book from before that we bring it into existence. Lo, that for Allah he easy. 41 Quran 57.023 So that you many not grieve over what has escaped you and not exult at what he has given you. And Allah who not like every self-deluded boaster. The ungod who couldn't manage a book for his only actual Razuli claims that he has one that contains everything, no matter how insignificant, that has ever occurred to the 100 billion people who have come and gone and to the earth itself over 5 billion years. And yet, Allah who is not like every self-deluded boaster. Sounds like self-loathing to me. But who can blame him? He's a loner, hanging out with scummy Arabs in the desert who are centuries from having developed running water or functional toilets. So he's a miserable bastard. And for a wannabe god with endless bounty, he sure seems to be as broke as his non-prophet. Quran 57.024 Those who are stingy and enjoy the people's stinginess, and whoever turns away, then, lo, indeed, Allah, he free of need, the praiseworthy. I have raised copious amounts of capital in my day for various business ventures, but never once by calling investors stingy or telling them that I really didn't need their money. It's hard to imagine Allah surviving an IPO. It is incredulous, actually, that the ungod would beg for money, plead for investors, bribe his slaves for a goodly loan, while besmirching Muslims as stingy while telling them that he has no need of them. That being the case, flip Allah the bird and flee. Quran 57.025 Certainly, we sent our Razalana with clear proofs, and we sent down with them Al-Kitabah the writing and the balance that may establish the mankind justice. And we sent down the iron wherein is mighty power and benefits for the mankind, and so that Allah who may test who it is that will help him and his Razulahu unseen. Verily, Allah all-strong, almighty.
Ungod and non-profit went 33 years without providing a single credible proof, clear or otherwise. And 42 there was no book sent down, no balance either, or even the means to operate it appropriately. And that's the good part because the Lord of Delusion would have Muslims believe that he sent iron down from the heavens for swords, because, unlike truth or love, there is power in weapons, which are such a benefit to mankind. Even worse, the advent of metal for weapons is so that Allah who can test the religious, to see who dies the fastest or who kills the best. Does the Lord really want to be that crass and transparent? Quran 57.026 Certainly, we sent Na and Ibrahim, and we placed in their offspring al nabiwata the prophethood and al Kitaba the writing and among them a guided one, but most of them defiantly disobedient. If Satan had beguiled the gullible and immoral into surrendering their souls to him without misappropriating Yahuwah's testimony, that would be disappointing, but not catastrophic. Lord only knows why he cannot stand up like a proud cobra and create his own goddamned religion without being such a weasel and stealing everything. Is Allah so incompetent, so inept and imbecilic that he cannot even weave a plot of his own? Good grief, Allahu, is pretending to be God. Why not at least act the part? How can this buffoon claim to be the creator of the universe when he can't even compose his own story? The founder of, Chris Lamb, from the Talmud was a very confused reptile, one who had chased his tail one too many times. Not only were Noach and, Abraham bookless, we, had nothing to do with either man. And the God who actually knew them and saved them via the Ark and the Covenant, does not even mention the notion of being, disobedient. There is no Hebrew word for, obey. God provides instructions, and we are afforded the opportunity to capitalize upon them or reject them. 43 But not Allah. He is apoplectic over disobedience. And for those who do not capitulate, becoming his thoughtless slaves, there is a painful punishment. Muhammad was the ungod's first and only Razuli. Sure, Antiochus Epiphanes, Peter, Paul, Luke, Vespasian, Titus, Nero, Akiba, and Hadrian, had come and gone and they were despicable, some even pedophiles and rapists, some cruel and militant, some even lied about speaking for God, but none of these obnoxious men offered the complete package of unabashed evil like Abu Qasim. Aisa, Jesus, is a religious fable. Daud was the Messiah, Son of God, and Passover Lamb, making Jesus Christ a counterfeit. Further, the Angel, as in Euangelion, was Paul's idea, not Allah's or even Aisa's. It served as Paul's personal replacement for the Torah. Although, to be fair to Satan, since Paul admitted being demon-possessed, he likely contributed to the Injil and just forgot the original terminology and co-author since six centuries had come and gone. Quran 57.027 We sent on their footsteps, our Razuli, and we followed with, Aisa, Jesus, son of Maryam, Mary, and gave him the Injil, Gospel. And we ordained in the hearts of those who followed him, compassion and mercy. But Rabbaniatan monasticism they invented, we did not prescribe for them, only seeking to please Allahi. But not they observed it right observance. So we gave those who believed among them, their reward, but most of them fazic and defiantly rebellious and disobedient. If the ungod wanted to pick a fight with Paul's Euangelion, or with the hearsay accounts attributed to Matthew, Mark, and Luke, especially in comparison to the Quran, the weakest argument should have been Rabbaniat, which speaks of, living in seclusion or isolation, being aloof, concealed, detached, and in solitude. That is Allah's prerogative as a loner. Even his Razuli was a recluse. Further, the word is Urdu and Hindi, not Arabic. And when 44 spelled in the Hebrew form, it is Rabbaniya, which is either, evil child of Yah, or, evil building of Yah. Despite the long history of monks, one never claimed isolation and poverty on behalf of Allahi. Further, it is idiotic for Allahi to claim that Rabbaniyatan was not prescribed but say that they did not observe it correctly. Since most of them were defiantly rebellious with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Lot, Moses, Jesus, and now Muhammad, even the Ad, the Mud, and people of Pharaoh, might the problem be the message rather than the messenger. Quran 57.028 O you who believe, fear Allah and believe in his Razuli. He will give you a double portion of his mercy and he will make for you a light you will walk with it and he will forgive you. Allah who forgiving, most merciful. Why would anyone in their right mind want to be associated with someone who tells them that the more they fear him, the better? It sounds insane to me. Quran 57.029 So that people may know Al-Kitabi the writing that not they have power or influence over anything from Al-Fadla the priorities and advantage, bounty, of Allahi and that Al-Fadli merit in Allahi's hand, he gives it whom he wills. Allahu the possessor of the great Al-Fadli merit and advantage. If no one can influence anything pertaining to Allahi, what is the point of creation? Why does a snake have a cause? Why kill for him? Why believe him? Why reveal the Quran if it has no effect or influence? Since Allah was having a conniption fit over Al-Fadli, I decided to search for its meaning, which is fraught with peril because Quranic words are defined by Islamic apologists, not dictionaries. And in this case, Fadli isn't actually, bounty, because it means, favor, or, merit, advantage, or, priority. Therefore, Allahi is his own priority. His 45 merit is what matters, as well as whatever is to his advantage because he was a satanic snake pretending to be God. Continue reading.